hard for me to put together because it deals with such a powerful topic and that's the topic of pathos or emotion. And I'm going to define pathos in a very simple way and then uh, I'm going to talk about the emotion and feeling around even me putting together this latest vlog and then uh, some things that I've been thinking about to help me deal with uh, the emotions and the feelings and uh, the attitude especially uh, over this last couple weeks and what we're going through so stay tuned yeah so building off last week's episode of telos meaning what is the end result or what is the trajectory or the final purpose of things uh, this week's episode is all about pathos and the attitude and the feelings and the emotions around what we do and how those drive our actions. I really believe that our attitudes inform how we behave and it's not just a matter of looking at how we behave or even how our students behave or how our family behaves, our children, our spouse. Uh, that is important to look at the behavior but it's more important I think to dig deeper than that and to ask questions about their attitude, specifically their feelings and emotions around why they are doing certain activities. And so when we look at the term pathos, uh, we would often think of the term pathological uh, and meaning some kind of pattern or innate inability or ability to do something, but that's not really what pathos means. Pathos is really all about the emotions, the feelings and the attitudes behind why we do things. And so it's pertinent, I think, for this week because this week's been really hard. And it's been, it's been hard because primarily I'm, I'm an extroverted person and I like meeting people face to face. I like going out with my wife to restaurants and, and enjoying those things. And we haven't been able to do that for the last six weeks. And this last week, quite frankly, has been one of those weeks where it's, uh, it's really weighed heavily upon me and, and it's actually affected my attitude. And <clears throat> it's affected my emotions. It's also affected how I feel. And that has directly informed some of my actions, so much so that I really had to force myself to go and do certain things to make sure that I wouldn't end up going into a spiral. And so I guess that's kind of what I want to share with you today, a little bit about what I do to help myself get through those quote unquote funks that we get into and really move towards some kind of positive action. Now our attitudes, they're powerful. And we have to ask the question, why? Why are they so powerful? And they're powerful because they generate down inside of our guts, down deep inside of us. It's, uh, it's one way that I explain it to my students in the sense that when you are absolutely scared out of your wits, when you have been uh, absolutely pushed to the brink of being frustrated and angry, you feel that deep inside your stomach, like deep inside your intestines almost. And in fact, the ancients believed that your gut area was the seat of all emotion and feeling. And it kind of goes hand in hand that when you feel scared or angry, mad, you most feel it in your, in your guts. You want to throw up, you're, you're sick, you're nauseous. Uh, or you're so scared that you you lose control of your of your stomach, and some people actually vomit. Uh, it's it's terrible. Um, but emotions are powerful and they're deep, and they're not sometimes easily dealt with. They're hard to control. They're hard to manage. And in some cases, they get us into trouble because our emotions sometimes just they just take over and we act out on them and we often have a lot of regret because of that. So isn't it interesting that our attitudes and our feelings and our emotions, they absolutely drive our behavior. They absolutely drive our actions. And so when I'm looking at this idea of telos or what is the end purpose or what is the end goal of doing things, I have to take into account how I feel, I have to take into account my emotions, uh, and I have to absolutely take into account my attitudes. Yeah, so last week was, was really hard for me and it was the first week out of the six that actually had any kind of significant impact on me. Um, 
and I don't know if it was because it was really the six weeks and it was just finally getting to me or being cooped up in my house and not having left for a number of weeks, not even to go grocery shopping or anything like that. Um, it was it was really hard and it, it and it no doubt had a massive effect on my my state of mind, my attitude, and that generated feelings and emotions and that in and of itself drove some of the actions that I did last week. And I, and I guess that's what I wanted to hit on today was that our, our attitudes and our feelings and our emotions, they, they, they really empower and inform our actions. We don't just, we don't just behave outside of a vacuum. We don't behave inside of a vacuum. There's something that informs our behavior. And when I look at how my students are coping, guiding, maneuvering their way through this particular time and, and space, and I look at my own colleagues who are doing this, and, and I have a colleague who just put up a, a, a great video on empathy, and I'll, I'll link it uh, in, the, in the show notes below, and I'll even card it above so you can go and take a look at it. But it, it just speaks to this time where we, because we don't know what we're really supposed to do and people keep using the term unprecedented time and, and we're not quite sure how to handle uh, the isolation, the, the social distancing, it creates this angst and I believe it creates a, an emotional state within most of us that again just drives our actions. and. I wanted to, I want to share with you some ideas that I've I've been thinking through to help get us through this period of time and and one of them was just to admit the struggle and even just to say out loud to my wife to my kids to some of my friends online that this week was particularly hard it was it was hard for me to deal with the separation and and not being able to see people physically uh, and to just say that out loud was was helpful and it helped me kind of step back and detach a little bit and begin to think through how I can maneuver my way through the rest of the week. And so just admitting the struggle to somebody else is massively important and I think that would be important for our students too and even our colleagues in saying to them, our students and our colleagues, hey listen, you know, it's okay to admit that you're feeling it really hard right now. and we don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks. We we don't even know what's going to happen in the next few months. Some of us are planning out for a fall return to some kind of normal. But even just to say that out loud and to admit the fact that we're struggling, I think for some of us helps us deal with the ego and the pride that we have, that we have to have all the answers and that we have to be up front leading and that we have to be leading the charge somewhere, even if it's into the, the, the bleak darkness. Um, I think admitting the struggle is, is probably one of the best things we can do and definitely one of the first steps I took this week. Another part of, of working through emotions and feelings and um, the, the attitudes that, that I've had is to I identify them and identify the fact that I'm, I'm frustrated and identify the fact that I'm angry or to identify the fact that I'm confused and, and even somewhat puzzled and, and, and all of those things, just start labeling them for what they are. Uh, I found that when I label them, they lose a lot of power because I think in that act of labeling, uh, I'm able to detach somewhat uh, and, be, and, be, and disengage uh, a little bit from the impact and the influence that those emotions are having on me right now. there was this attitude of, of what I had this week and and understanding that and giving it label and giving it station I was then able to begin thinking through how I can plan my way either around it or through it and more often than not I'm thinking of planning my way through it because I know that if I go through this rather than around it there's a lot more for me to learn there's a lot more for me to apply next time I'm in a situation like this where I can look back and, and say to myself listen this is what you went through 
this is what you found out, this is what uh, emerged for you when you were doing all this uh, this work and what came to the forefront, and this is what you planned and this is, was the result, so you can do those same things again. The circumstances will change, uh, the, the situations will change, but sometimes the plans, the principles, they won't change, and so those are transferable, and finding out what those are can really go a long way in determining how I can approach it the next time we're in, in something similar to this. So I hope this was beneficial for you. I hope this has uh, helped you. I know it's helped me a bit in getting it out there and admitting that this struggle is happening, admitting that these feelings and these emotions are there for me and helping me plan my way through this. And I hope you had a good weekend and uh, I really hope that you have a good week moving forward and we'll see you next week. Take care.